Hello and welcome back to the lab. To those who are joining us for the first time, welcome. To those who continue to join us in the lab, welcome back. As always, a huge thank you to the patrons that help support the channel, help make these restorations and videos possible. Your guys' your guys' help is a huge help to keep the lights on, and I do greatly appreciate it. I don't have a project on the bench today, which I'll get into the whys and things like that here in a minute. This is kind of going to be a different video. So if you're, uh, this is more an update video. I've talked to some of the patrons about what's happened, gone on in the last month or two. Um, life has gone sideways for us in a somewhat substantial way, but at the end of the day, I think it's going to be a, uh, it's going to end up being a positive. So um, I will get into what happened, things like that. I have a couple of questions that I would like to pose to uh, the viewers about how to go forward and uh, for the next couple of videos. And I also have some additions to the lab that I'd like to share with you guys, with everybody that um, wouldn't fit in their own video. It's just a couple of small things, but it's going to going to get us going in the future. So to get started, I will, uh, I'll talk about, this has made one appearance in a couple of my videos. This is the 178 test fixture for a 577. Let's you do op amps and things like that, test um, op amps. I was missing sockets that were here. And I happened to come across one of the sockets. So this is a um, test fixture for this particular unit. Now the other one that I didn't even know existed until I found it was I actually found this socket as well. Here I am trying to break it. Uh, I found this socket which is a um, military style op amp um, NIC socket that also fits this unit. for testing. So I'm um, looking forward to actually finally being able to use my 178. It's been waiting in the wings for the sockets, but we have those now. So I'll be doing a video on that here in the near future. One of the other newest additions to the lab isn't anything that plugs in. It's actually a book. Uh, I was able to, I didn't even know this book existed and I was able to uh, pick up a copy. Pretty reasonable. Uh, this will probably not be reasonable after this video. Videos have a tendency to do that. Um, do not pay some of the asking prices for this book. Uh, I've seen this book online for $500. You can pick up used copies for about 20, 30 bucks. That's worth doing. $600, there's a better way to get a copy. But it is Fluke's calibration manual. Uh, this happens to be the second edition. Uh, there is a first edition hanging around online of, it's questionable, get the real copy. Um, so I got a second edition and I've been reading through this as of late. Um, goes real in depth into some of the calibration tools and processes also some low low signal measurement. Taking uh, very low measurements is not easy and noise is everywhere and things are very susceptible to noise. So definitely some valuable information in here. Also there's a Keithley one that is available in PDF. They source it in PDF I believe. It's the um, I will actually look up what it is. It is the Keithley Ultra Low Measurements Handbook 7th Edition and I did check it is available for download from Keithley so grab a copy of that in PDF too. It does a deep analysis on guarding and microvolt, nanovolt, picoamp measurements, all kinds of uh, low level stuff and uh, how to keep charge from bleeding off the wires into the air when you're counting electrons at picoamps and femtoamps. So um, 
things get kind of wild when you get at that end of the uh, scale. One thing I will also do is leave the uh, link in the description to the Keith Lee low-level measurement handbook in the description below. Another thing that's come in recently to the lab that's just a miscellaneous uh, box. I picked this up from Sphere Research in Canada. I have only seen one of these so far in captivity and well I've only seen one of these so far. This one's mine. Uh, I've never seen another one of these but it is a decade inductance box. Very similar to a uh, decade resistance box except it's all inductors. I'm going to be getting some LCR meters and a few other things, so I am going to need to be checking inductance and capacitance on those. I do have, I've had for a while in the lab, this box has been hiding in the wings. You can actually see the size difference. Actually, let me get my resistor box from the same make. Um, this is a decade capacitance box, and it's a polystyrene. These are polystyrene caps, precision inductors. And then my other decade box is for resistance. That is this guy right here, so that's a decade resistor. I do want to get a better decade resistor box because I think it's ITE has the one that uh, goes from like 0.1 to a meg, and it's like 0.01% resistors or something like that. Um, that I do want to pick that up, but um, I ended up with a decade inductance box. Okay, gear acquisition for the lab. This is what I'm currently thinking. I'm getting a lot of questions about can you use a function generator to calibrate a scope? Because a lot of people don't have the some of the same gear that I have here in the lab to do the scope cals. So I'm thinking this is where I want to hit. It's a siglent um, function generator but the important spec on this is not necessarily the maximum frequency because this will get you in the ballpark you wouldn't be able to do a bandwidth check but that's okay it's the maximum rise and fall time of 2.2 nanoseconds so that's this 500 megahertz signal uh, coming out of this function generator now I have not checked this yet this is not a recommendation uh, for everybody who is new to the channel uh, the only support that I receive to the channel is from the patrons. Uh, no one has sponsored any of this equipment in the lab. I don't have any sponsors, nothing. Uh, the channel's not even monetized on YouTube yet, so um, there is no support. Everything uh, that I have in the lab, had nothing's been provided for me. Um, I, uh, I paid full retail or at least got a sale or something, but got uh, it's all full price, same thing everybody else can do. So that's where the lab's it. So if we do one of these, I'm looking at that price too. So uh, obviously this is going to be a problem, but it is what it is. That's the other thing that we are dealing with right now, which will lead into some of how life went sideways on us. Um, the next line down from the six, I think it's the 4000 series, this rise time goes to 8.2 nanoseconds, so it really falls off in speed. And especially doing the high frequency calibration of the scope, things like that, you're gonna want fast edges for that. So this is kind of where I where I want to be in theory. Uh, like I said, haven't tested it yet, not recommending this at all. This is just um, what I've come up with, but I'd like you guys to weigh in is if we should target the um, 6000 series or if you guys tell me I'm spending too much and uh, I should target something less to see if it's possible. Going much down from this, the adjustments are going to get shaky. Um, this is plenty of rise time to do a uh, uh, 100 megahertz scope like a 465. I don't know if this will go to a 475. I want to get some 475s on the channel, but I don't have any yet. Um, so I would like to do a, a 475 restoration because I'm, I'm getting some questions about that as well. So let me know what you guys think in the comments, um, and uh, we'll go from here. If this is a general looks good, let's do it. Um, 
probably get one of these on order and then see what we can do about calibrating a scope with it. Um, but yeah, let me know. Part of the reason the channel exists is to help answer these questions for everybody else. So that's uh, why I need help with some of this decision making. Okay, before we get into the way life went sideways in a bad way, some good news. I am starting to get parts. So these are the some of the stuff that I have on back order is starting to ship in. I'm starting to see some stuff actually come into the lab. Uh, this is a probably 80% of what I need to work on the, um, the 7854 calibration board. So that project is still in the works. I am just dealing with chip shortages on that. There's, um, I mean, I just have to wait. I've got the stuff in. Um, but I'm getting close to the point where I need to do a bill of materials for that and just start checking off, see how much is coming in because there's, oh, probably... 30, 35 items on the on the bill of materials for that, and I think when I put the order in, one shipped. So um, I there wasn't a reason to start checking anything in due to the fact that uh, it was going to be a while before I have it. I still don't have the ICs, although the um, transistors were the other one that I was waiting on. They came in. The ICs are still out in the ether out there somewhere. So um, just waiting on them to come back in. So that is an update on that. That project is not dead. However, it is still in a holding pattern. Another thing I said I was doing and I haven't gotten a chance to do yet is there is still a hole right there where a seven and a half digit meter should be. That is still in this box. No, Keithley's not taking forever. Uh, it's been so crazy around here. I have not gotten this shipped out yet. Um, the Cal with data, I think, is like five hundred dollars. I want to say two fifty, five hundred bucks is what I was told. I haven't been using the meter because it's been out of Cal, but I do need to. Uh, I do need to get this calibrated. Um, I am going to get it calibrated with data. That way I can go through that here. We'll even see what he, what uh, they send me back for a calibration document. I do want to start tracking, getting some history on this particular unit, because then I'll know when it starts to settle down and things like that. <clears throat> One of the things you'll see with precision equipment, this is true for the 8.5 digits too, is when they're brand new, they'll drift around a little bit, and then as they age, they'll really settle down and get stable. Um, and Keith Lee even says in the first couple of years, send them out once a year, and then as it starts settling down, you can start extending that calibration um, interval to get it out. But I want to start getting some data on this meter. So it's not, uh, it's still here. It's not, uh, not broke or anything. Nothing blew it up. It just needs to, uh, Head back to Keithley for a little bit. Okay, that about uh, sums up the issues that uh, the lab issues that have been going on. Um, for those who have been curious about an update, I've had a couple of questions from the people I've been talking about. I'm going to go into some detail about what has happened recently, sending life a little bit sideways. And we will go from there. So if that's um, not anybody's cup of tea, feel free to uh, drop out of the video right here. Uh, you're not going to miss much. Uh, for those who are curious and want to want the update, just hang in there and we'll get into it. Okay, well, coming off of the 800 subscriber video, and where I bought the Rubidium Standard, which I do not regret buying. Um, again, nothing is sponsored here. I paid full price for it on the website. So if you look up, uh, if you look up what the Rubidium Standard is, you'll find out exactly what I paid for it. There's no no corporate sponsors, no special deals, no nothing. And the channel's not even monetized yet, so I'm not even getting any ad revenue. So if you guys are seeing ads in the front of my videos, that's YouTube doing it. That is not even me. The community that's around this channel has been absolutely fantastic. Um, 
especially with all the comments, things like that. You guys are amazing, and uh, I really do enjoy putting these videos together. And um, what is that? And getting uh, getting the content out there, especially getting the responses back from everybody that uh, the videos are helpful. So we will continue to do that, um, and nothing will change. The um, the first thing that happened was very shortly after uh, we bought the Rubidium Standard, uh, my wife's car had developed a pretty decent clunking in the rear end to the point where she'd actually stopped driving it. She wasn't comfortable driving the car anymore. And we finally were able to get it over to a mechanic and uh, this is a mechanic that I trust and uh, I have worked with with many, many years. So I, I do believe this is accurate information and I have no reason to doubt it. So, But what ultimately happened was he put a... I was expecting when we went in, we were going to um, need some suspension work, shocks, maybe some springs in the rear end, something like that. Uh, she drives or used to drive a small... Small-ish SUV. It was a Saturn view. Um, the uh, rear suspension, turns out, the lower lower control arms in the rear suspension are no longer attached to the frame of the car. Not because anybody did anything, but because the frame of the car is no longer there. Um, it is completely, completely disintegrated and is gone. Uh, the mechanic lifted the car up off the ground, and the rear tire tried to stay on the ground. Um, so that car in my mind is no longer safe to drive and is not on the road. We are trying to get a little bit of money out of the car. Um, I am willing to sell it for parts if somebody needs an engine and a transmission or something like that, but I'm not going to sell it to anybody who intends to drive it because it's not safe to drive. So we lost a vehicle. Now, this is somewhat relevant to the channel. That's one of the reasons why I'm even making this video and filling you guys in because if it was just a vehicle we would have just taken care of it and not said anything however I've had some people reach out to the channel which I greatly appreciate and I will be taking everybody up on their I, I will be taking people up on their offers uh, to get some equipment and I've had to turn down a couple bulk equipment acquisitions for the channel because um, I had no way to move them it was usually a quick situation of somebody needing to clean out a garage, clean out storage, clean out a house, do something. And um, I wasn't able to do an acquisition or get equipment in, anything like that. So my primary vehicle is a truck. I do have a Silverado 1500. However, given the way that Silverado 1500 is configured... Um, I bought it used. The person that configured it did not put the heavy, the heavy, I have all the heavy duty towing packages on it. So I have the transmission cooler. I have a whole bunch of other stuff. And, um, but they put the light cruising rear end in it. So where it should be able to drag almost 10,000 pounds, it's stuck at like 5,000. Um, 5,000 pounds doesn't go far, especially on one of those trucks. And, um, it's getting up there in mileage as well. At the recording of this video, the truck has just shy of 300,000 miles on it. And um, the uh, I've had to put um, one transmission in it and because it blew the torque converter out of it. So I had to replace that shortly after we acquired it. And ever since I've had to put the new transmission in, I've been kind of skittish towing things with it because um, heavy heavy stuff with it. Now, some of the gear acquisitions that people have offered is in, uh, like an entire rack of HP equipment, but I had to take the rack too. So, I mean, we're talking probably two, 3,000 pounds of equipment um, when it's all in a 42U rack. Would have loved to have had the equipment. Um, didn't, even, didn't even mind the price that the gentleman was asking for it, but... Um, had no way to get it here, even if I wanted to go drive and pick it up, which I would have. Having 300,000 miles on a 2010, I spend a lot of time behind the wheel. 
so I've been kind of skittish about uh, towing with my 1500. Prior to this, my wife and I had talked about what we were going to do for cars and things like that. We made the determination that she actually wants to drive the 1500. Um, so uh, we will be replacing the 1500 with a proper towing vehicle. I will be solving the towing problem completely. The, uh, the replacement will be able to tow 18,000 pounds, so I will not have a towing problem ever again. I don't foresee I don't foresee myself needing anything over about ten thousand pounds. Um, I do some stuff with firewood every year and a few other things. Uh, and wet wood is uh, surprisingly heavy when you have to tow it. Uh, a single quart of firewood can weigh upward upwards of five thousand pounds, uh, over five thousand pounds. And you get a trailer that can support that, which weighs about eighteen hundred pounds in and of itself. All of a sudden, you're at seven thousand pounds towing which actually overdoes my, overloads the 1500, so I can't even do that with the 1500. So with my wife's car dying, uh, I was hoping to get a couple more years out of that, but uh, there is nothing I can do about that. It's, it's just done, even if I wanted to fix it. It's not like I can put an engine in it because the frame's gone. So uh, my wife is actually going to drive the 1500, and we are replacing the 1500. The new truck ha is on order, has been on order for about four weeks, um, but we are seeing lead times of about 26 weeks on that. So it's been on order since the very end of February, so uh, I think we ordered it like February 23rd or something like that. We did get notified that... Um, from the manufacturer that the truck was going to be built. So the good news is we are in line. I do not know when it's going to show up. So the dealer's keeping in contact with me on a regular uh, on a on a regular basis and um I did with everything that's been going on, I did have to I'm on my second dealership, but the second dealership is is being amazing to work with, especially given the times that we find ourselves in as of the recording of this video. If people would like updates as to what's going on with that, uh, let me know, and I'll just, uh, if I know anything, I'll, I'll give everyone an update with what's going on. Um, so we got that started. I've also done some things. Uh, we ordered a pressure washer. I don't know if there's any interest, any interest in that for everybody who's here. But just to keep, because I do live in an area where we salt, not heavily, but um, we do salt and brine the roads. So especially with what happened to the old car and the new truck, I picked up a pressure washer so I can keep the salt off the bottom of the car and at least keep the rust at bay for as long as possible. Um, but if anybody's curious about that, let me know in the comments, and if there's enough interest, I'll do a video on that. Um, but I will only do a video on that if there's interest. Um, the other thing I hope to use the pressure washer for is to wash off some of the gear for the restorations. So you can use, um, you can use a pressure washer to clean electronics. You just have to let them dry for an, for an, an appropriate amount of time afterwards and we're not talking hours we're talking days if not weeks because the pressure washer will force water into the transformer windings and things like that and all of that's got to get out of there before you fire it up so it can be done i do know tektronics did a cleaning routine on some of their gear that involved putting their scopes in a dishwasher um, and they're the only company i know of that actually has a nuclear decontamination protocol for their oscilloscopes a little interesting bit of tech history there so they can't get wet. You just have to let them dry, and they have to dry for a while. So I will have something to come pick up gear and get more content for the for the channel in the lab. Also get some some more gear. I do want to get some more HP gear in in the mix. Um, coming up on uh, we've got a lot of good tech gear here, but I would like to get some. Uh, some HP and some other manufacturers in here because I'd like the bench and the lab to be a good blending of the modern and the 
vintage because there's some stuff the vintage stuff does better and there's some stuff the modern stuff does better. Um, for example, even though I have a source measure unit, if I had a second one, I would still like to use a 576 or a 577 better than the SMUs. Um, I don't know why. Uh, I don't need to record the graphs for anything. I'd love to get data capture on those. I, I, uh, but that's something that we're working on. Our lab cat may say hello here in a minute. She looks like she wants to jump up on the bench, and I don't have anything on here, so this is the only time she'll be able to. So with the new truck, once I get it, I have to run it through break-in because um, it does have a break-in procedure. Yes, hello, there she is. Hi. I think this is the first time she's been on camera. Luna. There she is. You're not supposed to be up there anyway. Once I get it through its break-in period, I have to break in the engine correctly. Then I have to do the trailering break-in correctly. After that, I can then tow it, take it out of town, and uh, pick up some equipment and do some things as those deals come up within reasonable driving distance. So, yes, I am interested in um, lab equipment and depending on the equipment mix and things like that, I would not necessarily be opposed to bulk buys. And I will now be able to pick up gear by the pallet. So, should not have a problem moving stuff around anymore, which is one of the reasons we're doing what we're doing. That is, however, going to slow my timeline down a little bit. So, because I am going to have to finance some of this truck, I'm going to have to take on a take on a car payment for a little bit. It was unexpected, and it's an absolute disaster to buy a car right now. Um, but it is what we have to do, and I can say we're getting the best deal we can given the circumstances. So, um, it will be a good deal all around, but uh, it's. Um, less than ideal but it is what it is so we ordered the new truck the other problem was the 1500 then got real cranky so um i have a amsoil oil bypass system on the 1500 oil cooler lines started leaking oil bypass system started leaking I had to replace the hydraulic lines for the oil bypass system. Had to replace the oil leak. It ended up needing an oil change. At the time, it needed an oil change. Um, they found the hydraulic lines for the bypass system were leaking. So I had to get those replaced. At the same time, they found out the axle in the truck needed to be replaced. Um, battery needed to be replaced battery cable needed to be replaced, wheel bearings needed to be replaced, so there was a laundry list of stuff that came up, just hit me within two weeks on the uh, 1500 while I was getting it ready for uh, my wife to be able to use as a daily driver. Now, keep in mind, all this stuff hit, and I was daily driving the truck. I'm still daily driving the truck, and so... Yeah, it was down for about two weeks, um, and we were all right. So that actually put us two vehicles down, which was far less than ideal because um, the view wasn't drivable and the truck was down for two weeks of maintenance. Um, so that happened. Uh, we're through that. Everything's good. I'm in the process right now of just clearing the decks, getting ready for the truck to uh, the new truck to come in. But yeah, on top of finishing paying off the rubidium, uh, we got whacked for about $2,000 in maintenance on the 1500. Now, I'm not irritated by that by any stretch of the imagination. That truck has 300,000 miles on it, so at 300,000 miles, everything's a wear part. I was really surprised at how expensive the battery cable was. <laughs> but... <laughs> um, that was way more than it should have been, but um, that did fix the starting problem 
um, for a, for a little bit, I was thought I was going to be into it for an engine, but I ended up being into it for a battery cable and a starter. Yeah, the starter went out too because when the battery cable went out, it took the starter with it. So yeah, so new hydraulic lines, starter, battery cable, axle, oil change, wheel bearings, front, both sides, all in the span of about two weeks. Um, and we were just coming out of that. I was thinking we were going to be okay. And, uh, I was doing some work in, um, lab number two in our rack and our main file server that stores a lot of information for us, a lot of the YouTube video files and things like that. I was putting a new UPS in there because... I had come into an upgraded version and was putting that in, and the UPS decided, or um, when I uh, shut everything down, so I didn't nothing powered off. Shut it down gently, turned everything off, and I go to turn it back on, and three of the drives are out of the array, so we lost all the data on our main file server. Um, it all just went poof. I've been running that file server for uh, five, five years, I think, six years. And it's run 24-7 for that long. Um, the drives are just aging out over time. But uh, the three the three drives failed. I tried to get them back online, and they were just dead. The other problem with that was the file server was set up in a RAID 6 array. The RAID 6 array... Um, you can lose two drives and still have the data. You lose a third, it's gone. So the data dumped on us, got everything all back up and running, got the RAID reconfigured, did everything else, started a restoration because I have, uh, fortunately, I have backups for all of that. It's just in very, very time-consuming shoving all this data down a USB cable. Um, so I start restoring the backups and two more drives fall out of the array one after the other. So in the in the course of two days, we lost five hard drives in this in this uh, file server box. This is not the file server box that I did a video on, that small Dell unit. This is a bigger one. Um, the good news is that small, when I put together that Dell unit, because the main one was making me nervous, all my electronics documents, uh, STL files for all the stuff, everything like that, that's all backed up. We have all of that. I have all the other data stored somewhere else. So that's all backed up. So the whole thing was backed up. I just have to restore everything from backup, which has been a very, very long process. The other problem is, since five drives died on me within three days, the drives are probably aged out. So I am actually replacing the file server. Um, that was another thing. My wife and I had been talking about um, our content doesn't overlap too much, but my wife is a streamer, so when you do uh, when you shoot video and you do streaming, especially when you do two and four K streaming, uh, you watch hard drive space evaporate like it's going out of style. Uh, it's just that the file sizes are just monstrous. So we so we have a new file server. It's on order. Um, that should be here, I'm recording this on a Tuesday, that should be here Thursday, um, but it's still going to be several weeks before it's up and running, because I got to put, I got to put the file server in the rack, get it racked in, build the array, format the array, initialize the array, and I want to let the array initialize completely before I start putting data on it, um, so I'm probably looking at for, for a full initialization and a format, four to six weeks, uh, three-ish, three to, uh, call it three to, three to five weeks before I can even put data on it. So, um, I got to limp the file server I've got along as long as humanly possible. Um, and it's slow going. Um, but right now it's up and running. I have a feeling it's going to stay up and running as long as I don't turn it off. Uh, it is on a good UPS, so... Uh, it should be fine. That is where it is. I've just been feeding it data, 
getting everything restored, getting it all up and running. Um, it's just been horribly time consuming over the past couple of weeks. And then keeping up with work with the car situation and everything else, it's been, it's been kind of bonkers around here. I do want to say we are good. My wife and I are, are fine. It's just something we're working through. So, and we will be okay. That's, that's not, not going to be a problem, not going to be an issue. Um, I am going to have to slow down my gear acquisition for the bench, but that is what it is. Although I have uh, some people that say they have a bunch of stuff for me as long as I come pick it up. I am very interested in picking it up, and we'll be able to do that. Uh, we're targeting truck. Uh, realistically, the dealer's hoping I'm going to get the truck in the May, June-ish time frame. So uh, break-in periods... I think it's 500 miles and then 500 miles with the trailer. So I think it's 1,000 miles, but I can't start the trailer break in until I've got 25K on it. So not 100% sure when I'll be able to um, get the trailer out of town or get it out, get the truck out of town with a trailer. But time will tell on that. So more content is coming. Uh, I'm not going anywhere. We will continue to make YouTube videos. If anybody has any suggestions for topics, questions, things that they'd want to see, Definitely leave it in the comments below, and uh, I hope that lets you guys know what's kind of been going on around here, uh, but we're doing okay. Um, things are on the upswing, and uh, but it got a little bit crazy there in the last couple of weeks. I do want to say thank you, everybody, for being here. Your, co your guys', everybody's comments definitely keep me going, keep me making videos. So this channel would not exist without everybody who's here. So once again, thank you. Especially a huge thank you to the patrons uh, who help keep the lights on and everything moving forward. Um, you guys are a huge help, uh, especially in the guidance department and in the funding department. If anybody would like to join in that, there is a patron page open. Um, if there's enough interest, I could set up a Ko-Fi or something like that. But there is no additional content on Patreon. Patreon, it's just a it's a way for people who are inclined to support the channel and uh, help me acquire gear to make videos on, so I can continue, so I can uh, keep making videos. Uh, everything on everything on Patreon goes directly back into the lab to help with gear acquisition and things like that. It's it's not um that month that the, those funds go nowhere else. But yeah, so thanks again for everyone being here and I will see everybody in the next video.